Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Eric. Hello. Hello, Christian. How are you, sir? It's great to see you. Um, one of the, I, you know, I always had that kind of, uh, like, I never felt like I was one of the old timers in SharePoint. I, like, I feel like I came in the second wave. And, uh, and, and you were always part of that group of the, the, the earliest of the SharePoint MVPs. But for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yeah, so my name is Eric Sheffs, and, and as you've indicated, I've been a SharePoint MVP for a very long time. Uh, back when we had SharePoint MVPs, of course, we don't have those anymore. Now. Right. M365s or whatever we are. Uh, and so I've been around since 2007 in the MVP program, been in the SharePoint space since 2000, if you can believe that. Um, uh, b- before, if you count Tahoe and whatnot, but really in, in production stuff since 2000. Uh, and I've been, like all of us who've been around a long time, I've been all over the map. But I'm primarily known as a developer and, and architect, but I've done everything from training to tech writing to, you know, site admin to, you know, go configure lists, jockey, uh, you know, and, and everything in between. So I've been around it a long time. And of course, over the years, that's grown into all the cloud workloads and all that stuff that we do now in M365. I don't do as much on the team side. I know some people specialize there. I'm starting to do more and more power platform stuff just because our focus on um, connectors, but, mm-hmm. uh, and and a lot of Azure um, these days. I'm based here in, in Dallas, uh, just north of Fort Worth, actually, not far from yourself. Now, welcome to the neighborhood. Well, not there. That's a longer story. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, okay. yeah, still, <laughs> still in Utah. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, you'll be here eventually. We'll get eventually here. I will. Yes, yes. That's the plan. <laughs> um, and I spent my time between here and our office in the in the UK. So I like to joke all the time that my office is in uh, 4A on flight 20. <laughs> We're coming back on flight 21. <laughs> I'm easy to fly. Well, very nice. So so I know that you're doing, uh, so also an author uh, with Techie Gurus and involved in that stuff, but also doing a lot of community stuff uh, for folks that aren't aware uh, Eric is kind of uh, rounding up, heading up uh, the the new location of the North America Cloud and Collaboration Summit, or NACS. Yeah, so great conferences. You know, Mark Rackley has been running that for years in, in Branson, Missouri, and he always did a great job uh, with that conference. A beautiful venue, good location, but a little hard to get to. Uh, and, and a little Especially if you live in the West, trying to get to the center of the country is difficult. Usually, like I, I, I one time I flew to Atlanta, to to track back to get to uh, (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah. it it can be challenging so and we wanted to grow it and specifically we wanted to take it beyond just the traditional sharepoint content uh more into cloud content around azure and and even uh multi-cloud around aws and google and salesforce and and really just be more of a cloud centric uh, event than just the traditional M365 space. It's still our heritage and still our roots, but um, we needed to take it up a notch. And to do that, we needed to move it. So we brought it here to the DFW area. It'll be in the Irving Convention Center, uh, which some people are familiar with. It's the spaceship looking thing between Dallas and Fort Worth. I know you've been there. It's an, it's an odd looking building, but a very distinctive, a great venue space, uh, really convenient. That area has grown up with some really nice uh, pubs and restaurants and and there's a huge music venue next door so it's a great location to have a conference a great time of year in early april kind of before everything else gets going uh, on the calendar and uh so we we think it'll be a great opportunity to really take it to the the next level and grow we're going to have over a thousand people there we're partnering with Inatech. Uh, who does uh, more security and non mm-hmm. sort of app, uh, uh, akin to what we do sort of next door, but not the same, uh, certainly not in the Microsoft space. Uh, and so it'll be a great event. Women in technology will be there. So we're going to have, by the time we get to day three, we'll have probably, gosh, I don't know, 1,200 people there. So it'll be a great event. Looking forward to that. Well, I, just the fact that you move from a metro that has, I don't know how big Branson is, hundreds of thousands to 7.5 million people just in the, the vicinity hopefully we'll see it grow. I don't know if you've got like a max, like a cap of what you can hold in that space or. We do um, sort of. 
the venue somewhat dictates obviously what we can do um, within the space, um, but we're looking to cap it at around 1500 people total because that's really all we can fit in the uh, breakout rooms plus you know have nice lunches and, and right. exhibit space and and all that uh so we'll if we can hit those numbers great if we need to go bigger next year you know we'll we'll find a way to do that but i think that's a nice that's a big community conference yes right? it this is. is a nonprofit, right this this is not a you know compete with the big m365 comp power platform comp type of, of things this is still a community driven event and that's a lot of people it is. I it was had a conversation with somebody like you know having organized a lot of the SharePoint Saturdays. In fact, funny note is that I was I, I was just looking at a picture that Bill Bear at Microsoft just uh, tweeted out of the share quilt, which my mother in law lovingly sewed years back of conference T-shirts and and logos and things all over it. It's now hanging uh, in the on the wall in Building Thirty Four as part of the Microsoft's oh, art collection. That's cool. You know, hashtag share quilt you can find it if you ever visit microsoft campus you can go and and see it and and do a check-in at foursquare which is still a thing people uh but you can check in at the at the quilt um but that up at the top of it on the front side is the sharepoint saturday ozarks the first one um is part of the quilt as well so that's part of the heritage of now nax um yeah 2009 yeah but you know, so I uh, we're talking about organizing. Like uh, the biggest that I ever personally helped organize community event was just had a, just over two thousand people as a two day event. I I know what went into that and doing events that are three to five hundred people. How much work? How many months of effort? So it's it's a lot to go and do. And it's um and for folks too, uh, you know, for MVPs and we're always you know, listing our contributions to things that we're doing to kind of maintain our MVP or people that want to get into. It organizing community activities holds some of the greatest weight and value. Microsoft recognizes that effort that it takes to organize it, things. It does take a lot of work. You know, I'm also on the board of uh, the Collab Days Organizing Committee, which is um, more of a European focus, but we do have a few Collab Days events here. Um, in, in Utah, March 1st, Collab Utah. Days Utah. So yeah, it's yep, going to be great. Platform, so. Um, and so between that and, and organizing the conference, I, and I'll tell you the game changer for us has been run events. If, yeah. if we didn't have the run event software, uh, which grew from, you know, Addison, Mustafa and Spence and, and uh, Alex and all the guys putting together that conference, I'm talking about the European Collaboration Summit uh, mm -hmm. and Cloud Summit, grew out of their needs to run that on a skeleton crew as a community event, right? And what he's done with that software is just phenomenal. I can do the work of five people. Uh, yeah, with I, I need a, a full time team if I didn't have it. That that is something for people that are interested because because the the beginning of all these things. I mean, SQL Saturday and SharePoint Saturday and kind of all of these events that now you have Microsoft Community Days and you've got Collab Days, you know, and um, you've got uh, an AMS as well in in a lot of some in Europe and and some in Asia. Um, so you've got these community platforms out there, but the Run Events platform is the most comprehensive. It's the slickest package there. And for, so if you are thinking about uh, in your region, putting together an event, like I ran, one of my favorite events I ever ran was in Bend, Oregon. The most we ever had was 98 attendees and, and speakers and sponsors on top of that. But it was a fun, yeah. close knit, like group that got together. And we did that like four or five times. Um, and, you know, to, to have, if you're thinking about doing something like that, there is a platform, there's a resource. So you can actually leverage the run events platform for free. Yeah. And it's free to anyone who's running a, a community conference, you know, not uh, free or close to free, right? Sometimes right. you have to charge to cover your costs. It's just nature yeah. of the beast. But, but yeah, they're, they're really, you know, Addison and the gang come from a community background like you and I do, and they really want to contribute. And, and it's just been a godsend for us to have yeah. um, this capability. Uh, to put this together. So that said, it still takes, you know, a team to to run it. And as you say, it's a tremendous amount of effort. It's, it's a six month full-time okay. effort to put on the show. There's, um, a, there's a lot. Well, something that big as well. So, you know, happy to help, of course. And and in the meantime, I know you're doing some writing too. Kind of what are, what are your topics that you're focusing on? What are you speaking on when you're going to events right now? 
Yeah, we've since really the the whole lockdown thing in, in 2020, we refocused the business or, or maybe I should say we sort of stepped back and we've done a lot of, as you know, a lot of product work um, in the past, uh, you know, everything from the original software that we, Sonar that we sold to Idea and then on the Metalogics back in the day and uh, all the stuff we do with combined knowledge and now I have point. Uh, with with training plus and whatnot, so we've always had a, a product development component. Uh, just made wasn't necessarily under our own brand uh, for what we were doing. But but during the pandemic, we sort of refocused and said, do we want to continue to be a raw consulting company with just a you know some product offshoot as ideas come up to us, or do we really want to focus? And we we took the view that we wanted to focus on becoming a, a product first company. So we we created the Aptogen brand. Uh, and from that, we focused on an area that may seem a bit esoteric, but was really ahead of the curve from what we were seeing. And that was the whole idea of, of connectors um, in the cloud and specifically focusing on on cloud to cloud um, connectivity um, and utility. There's lots of business automation platforms, which is the area we've traditionally been very strong in. Uh, and each of them has their own extensibility story, but the good ones all have ways to enhance the platform with some sort of external connectivity from Power Platform to Nintex to, you know, pick your, your platform. Uh, and so we really saw that as an opportunity that wasn't really being exploited. We created Power Tools over the pandemic and released it. We've now got over a thousand uh, subscribers on the Power Tools platform, uh, which has been great primarily in the Power Platform space. But one of the big focus areas that we sort of stumbled into was Salesforce uh, and working with customers on what their automation needs were and where they needed extensibility. Salesforce has a great automation platform, but a limited extensibility story. Um, you have to write a lot of code, which is kind of true of everything else in the Salesforce world. So we just jumped in. We said, why not? It's an opportunity to learn something new. Let's see what we can do in this space. So we became a Salesforce partner and got listed in the app exchange, uh, which is no mean feat, uh, and, and started that ball rolling. And it's really been an educational experience for us, so much so that we're now focusing on uh, cloud to cloud connectivity between Salesforce and other platforms, um, starting primarily with uh, Microsoft Power Platform, uh, but also doing stuff with Nintex and, and some of the other traditional players that you'd know uh, in the space from a auto business automation perspective. And it's all about bringing multiple clouds together. And it it's part of the same theme that we have for NACS, which is multi-cloud. So many organizations now, it's just part of what you do. You have to yeah. be multi-cloud. You can't just yeah. be in one. L long stack. gone are those days. I mean, I remember 20, 25 years ago, and you would find companies that would be like, we are a Microsoft shop and that's all we'll look at. And that's all we'll consider. And we'll figure out a way to do it through the Microsoft path. Like it doesn't exist anymore. Like e every enterprise out there has a multi, multi cloud. So they're looking at how do we integrate these things together? And, and it was actually, and I often talk about this, like Satya with its first keynote. So I think it was the first, uh, still was branded as the uh, uh, Worldwide Partner Conference, WPC, before it got rebranded as Inspire, um, mm -hmm. where he gave his first keynote when he became C CEO. And he talked about, it's like, we're going to build the best software that's out there. Where we don't have the best software, we're going to partner. We are going to, and, and basically what he said was, we need to look at the customer experience from beginning to end. We may only own parts of that, but we need to remember the customers looking at this and we need to do everything we can to make sure that's a fluid. So a fluid process, which means integration, which means opening things up um, and realizing that they're not going to win every part of an end-to-end -end deal with, with clients, but do what you can to be the easiest partner to work with, which Microsoft is not always. The Maybe some work still needs to be done. Yeah. In There's opportunity there for Microsoft to yeah. improve in that. And the other, hey, one other thing too, um, it, for folks that aren't familiar with like the training and onboarding, the community aspect of Salesforce, I'll tell you, like it is, in fact, I had, oh, I don't have it behind me. I used to have, uh, what's the little character that the, the uh, so I'm I'm signed in. I'm in Salesforce. That uh, so I've got like yeah, they got the stuff laser and, and, and yeah, yeah, the little Eskimo looking bear thing. I forget his name, but but they so but their their process for training and community building around that. It I mean it is a lesson to be learned for everybody else. Like go look at that. I I look at that as the high mark of how you bring people together, how you train community. Like I 
it's just amazing. And so it's, it's free folks go sign up. If you're, it, it, you know, if you work with Salesforce at all, or just want to learn about it, you know, here we're, we're Microsoft people, but talking about that, recognize when somebody does something right, go look at how they build the learning paths, training, um, and, and help with new developers coming in, getting, building skills and connecting them with experts. It's amazing. Yeah, it's the gold standard, no question. And, and the difference between the Microsoft Partner Program and the Salesforce Partner Program is, is night and day. Um, it's, it's easy, to, it's harder to get into the Salesforce Partner Program, but, but the process is thought through end to end. And, and to give credit where credit's due, you know, Salesforce initially had one product area to focus on where Microsoft has, right? It, it's sure. much wider. Of course. That's that's not as true anymore, but they they do a phenomenal job. And but there are also areas where uh, you know Microsoft does a better job in places than than Salesforce does. But the the truth of the matter is that customers have both. And when they want to integrate them, we want to be there uh, making that happen. Uh, and that's done through our API infrastructure that we built and the connectors uh, that we provide. And so that's what, because that's what we're working on, that's what I talk about uh, out at conferences. I'm um, kind of the, you know, custom power platform custom connectors guy. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's, you know, probably a few dozen, April Dunham is another one inside of Microsoft that's well known for talking about that. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's the message that we're out spreading. So the the writing for Techie Gurus, I got my 10 part series. I think we're up to five or five. six of those published yep. now. And it's all connectors A to Z, right? Yeah. Uh, from beginning to end, uh, from everybody who wants to just learn about them, to create custom ones, to publish them. The next articles coming up are all about publishing uh, and getting them out there um, through the the ISV program and the independent publisher uh, program. And there's a lot, it sounds simple. Oh, they're just connector. It, it goes pretty deep. And there's a lot that you need to know to be effective uh, in that area. Uh, it's a great team that's working on that behind the scenes at Microsoft. The, that connectors team is, is doing a really wonderful job in growing that community to in just a couple of years to a thousand connectors uh, in the gallery, which is a great milestone for them. They're really doing a lot of work. Uh, like every other team, they could use about, you know, twice as many people as they have. Of course. But, uh, but yeah, so I, I'm trying to spread that message. I still touch on some of the things I'm known for enterprise content management, of course, uh, big, you know, Rob Bogue and I talk about that as often as we can. Has a lot of relevance these days with preparing for Copilot and Syntex and whatnot. So that's um, still a lot of what I talk about. Surprisingly, what I don't talk about anymore is SharePoint development um, mm. because yeah. honestly, I just don't do it. Yeah, it's, you know, th there's a lot of other pieces to that pie. I, it's not that I don't do any, I still do some, but there's a lot of pieces to that. And as you move more into the Azure space and get to working with multiple things, you know, you it, it's good to learn new stuff and get to other pieces of the ecosystem. Sure. Now, just we're, we're uh, yeah, we come across just signed on uh, a, a new author this morning that is in the uh, works a lot with SPFX and, and so is in that the developer sphere, but working very closely with, with SharePoint. And, and so it's, it's a, uh, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting to see again, coming from, as we both do coming from the SharePoint MVP background, you know, the world has changed and evolved a lot. I mean, SharePoint's still there. It's at the core of so many of the solutions that we talk about, we write about, you know, the, the community activities, but um, yeah, we're, it's, it's just become really diffused out there around the topics it's it's uh there's a lot which makes it difficult to kind of sometimes to feel like how do i keep up with everything that's going on you can't do everything you've got to kind of pick your areas that you want to focus on specialize in it used to be and you were there back in the day sound like a bunch of old timers but um you were there back in the day when if you were a sharepoint expert you were expected to know everything about the platform right uh, and we were the first ones to say, hey, hang on a minute here. This is nobody knows everything. Right. right. Um, but there was an expectation that you had your hands around this whole beast. And that is definitely not the case uh, anymore. It's not even it's not humanly possible. Right. It's too big. There's too many moving parts, uh, too many um, interdependencies, teams and OneDrive and SharePoint and now Dynamics and Power Platform. And you have to pick an area that you can specialize in that you can go if you want to go deep some people are excellent generalists i'm a yeah. terrible generalist uh but some people are really good at that and you need those uh certainly you know business analysts and whatnot need to have that capability to jump between them but um 
uh, sometimes you got to pick something and just go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. There's a well, lot of that to choose from these days. Well, that And that's another reason for being involved in the community aspect of it. It's you don't have to know everything, but you can have a, you know, Rolodex. Sorry, that's an old term. I know, but you can have a list of the experts that you know, you can turn to when you have questions. And that's one of the best parts about the, the community is like, I, I don't know every answer, but I know somebody that probably knows the answer to that question. Yeah. And therein lies the advantage of community, right? Because um, as you and I both know, we, we have a network that spans the globe of the subject matter experts that we can reach out to. So if I want to know about search, someone has a deep search question, right? Call Agnes. Uh, you know, if they have a, a, a power platform question, they want to get started in power apps, we call Laura and, and everybody has their area of, of expertise, right? If it's deep in SPFX, I'm calling Julie Turner and asking her how to do it. Yeah. Um, so there's that community that the, is really, truly the sum of the parts is greater than uh, uh, the sum of the whole is greater than the individual parts, right? Because it's our ability to reach out to the people who know things and make those connections and say, you need to know about X, you need to talk to Y. Uh, and, and because of that, it's still true that our community is a little different, even inside of Microsoft, right? You've been to the MVP events, you know how the, the that synergy kind of works. And we still have this sort of global neighborhood in the M365 space. We kind of all know each other for the most part, yep. and we can all reach out um, and work together. And I can tell you that not all communities are like that. Well, no, you know I, that. I was going to add another layer to it. It's 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 even something where I know that, uh, you know, having, so I work with North America and Asia Pacific. I know that depending on the times of the day or night that somebody's asking a question that, okay, that person's going to be asleep in EMEA, but I know somebody that's over in Australia or in Singapore that can answer that question. So again, that it's a, that's another powerful aspect of this, this community. And, and it is something that I know it, it and you hear this, and I'm sure you hear this a lot too, from, from people that just at Educon Chicago last week and, and somebody who came up and uh, recruited them to write for Techie Gurus and, and was sitting and talking about the community. And he mentioned, but he says, yeah, he says, says I'm, I'm getting really deep in like a couple topics that I'm passionate about. I'm really excited about. I'm reading and becoming, trying to become an expert in Microsoft syntax. And I'm like, Hey, that's a good area to, to go and build expertise in and, uh, because we, we, you know, there are few experts out there. We need more knowledge that's out there. And he, and he did the, the whole kind of imposter syndrome thing. He's like, yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know everybody. I don't know the community. I'm not plugged in. So I'm probably not the right person to then share my experiences. Like, no, like stop with that. Share your experiences, share what you're, you're learning. Come and talk to the MVPs that are there. The speakers at the conferences We're some of the most social people in the world and happy to, help mentor and and bring up other people but it it takes those first steps like people need to step up and say hey i'm i'm interested in and in doing this and sharing what what i learned there's humility is an important part of it too not just the hey i want to i want to be an mvp and, and that's yeah. traditionally been the strength of our our smaller community run conferences from the early SharePoint Saturdays uh, right down to the collab days that we have today. I mean, there are events like Bletchley Park in the UK where they specifically set aside X number of slots for people who've never spoken before. Yeah. Right? Uh, and and that's huge. It we take for granted walking up in front on a stage in front of four or five, you know, six seven thousand people, whatever it is, you know, boom, and delivering what we do, and it's just part of our comfort level because we've been doing it so long. But a room of thirty people is really intimidating to someone who's never done it before, who assumes that everyone in the room knows more than they do. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yep. Well. Um, that's that's why one of the best things too is it, you know get started in your local you know user groups and there's still a lot of user groups. We, it's certainly true in Utah as well, where most of our speakers are in other regions. It's and it's virtual. There we have people at the at the location, but we've got the giant screens, which is really nice, and we're able to have in person and the the virtual. Um, but whether it's in person or virtual, uh, one of the best things you could do is is reach out and say, Hey, I, I saw you present on that. I'm looking to get started. Can we co-present on something? Like I absolutely, I love it when people yeah, approach absolutely. me and say, hey, I saw this and can we do something together? Um, because it's less work and I'm happy to help and develop, you know, doing that so, and, and kind of spread that work out. 
Yeah. And there is sometimes we're guilty of this ourselves of, of you know, maybe being a little bit too uh, clickish, right, with our friends and people that that we know. But I think I can speak on behalf of the wider community that that if you see us, talk to us. Yeah. If we're there, right, uh, uh, to interact with people in the community. And if you have a question, right, if you need help, whether it's I have a technical problem and I can't quite figure it out, right, and I need to brainstorm, just bounce some ideas off somebody to, hey, I'd really like to get involved in the community and volunteer and help or speak. That's what we're there for. Yep. Uh, and so I would say never be intimidated, right? That MVP title means come talk to me. Right. That's what I'm here for. We're, we're, we're here to interact. Yeah. Uh, and so I would hope that everybody out there who who wants to participate, we, we love to grow the community and see new folks come in and uh, get fresh, new, uh, new ideas. Not us old timers. Right. Young people to get off our lawn. Let's get some new ideas and some fresh blood in. Um, and that's a good thing that benefits everybody. Completely agree. Eric, really appreciate your time. Folks that want to get in touch with you, reach out and connect with you. Where are you most active in social? Where can they find you? Well, as you know, I'm not much of a social media type of creature, but I'm what? forced, what? forced <laughs> by my, my <laughs> marketing and sales folks to be on LinkedIn. So probably LinkedIn is the best place and, you know, a little bit on Facebook. I don't do much work type of stuff on Facebook, but, you know, jump on and, and ping me um, and certainly come to a conference, right? If you see my name on the bill, come to a conference and say hi and, and let's make sure we have a conversation. And we'll have the links to all the stuff that we just talked about. So you can find it out, of course, on the YouTube page, out on the podcast, as well as on BuckleyPlanet.com, where this page, everything, all the info will be there. So you can find Eric that way. So, Eric, thanks a lot for your time. Thanks, sir. Always good to see you.